well, we'll worry about that later. Yeah, what we're going to do today, module one deals with uh, solving equations. And this is something you did early in pre-algebra, for those of you who remember pre-algebra. Um, stuff like this. See, that actually was a pre-algebra problem. So if you look at those sheets, you've got the problems on the left side are all problems from pre-algebra. And the problems on the right are problems from beginning algebra. And you can see that what we do in beginning algebra is we, we take what you learned in pre-algebra and we go a step further. Then if you take intermediate algebra, what we do is take everything you learned in this class and then we go a step further. Then if you take college algebra, we take everything you learned in intermediate algebra and we go a step further with it. That's how you learn math. So we're going to start with the basics and build up really quickly. Hi. But what I'd like you to do first is I'd like you to find somebody to sit with. So if you're sitting alone, please move and sit with somebody because we're going to work in pairs. And even though each of you is going to do your own sheet, you're going to work together on it. And what I'd like you to do is sit with somebody else and let's spend five minutes until 1.10 just getting to know those people. Like, hi, who are you? Where are you from? Oh, I'm so-and-so and I'm from... We could script it out. <laughs>
I mean, it's very strange, but if she pushes printable version, suddenly she can see the video. Really? See, I had to go in and do the PowerPoints, and I wrote down all the notes from them. Oh, like, good for you. You teach the class. Come on up. No problem? You're not shy. No. I turned in that paper up there. Okay. And I was just talking to her. Can I have her? You know what I'm saying? She takes awesome notes. Well, that's between you two. Uh, uh, but I put my notes online also. Okay. So, the more the better. Yeah. Yeah. The more the I agree. Can you be my note taker? This is great. I'm going to keep looking you so you'll stay right here. I, like, I really get a mask on right now. Really bad. I'm not good at it. <laughs> okay. Oops. We went a minute over. Now that you're best friends forever. <laughs> yes. Okay, what what I'd like you to do, the whole idea of solving equations, you may have already heard this or you may not have, is you want to think of a scale. All right, and if you've got a scale that's balanced, that means whatever's over here is the same weight as whatever's over here, and pretty much your scale is balanced. So if you see something like this, That equals means that whatever is over here is the same weight as whatever is over here. So if for some reason you wanted to add something to both, you add something over here, it'll get, right, that'll be heavier. So if you add something here, you've got to add it here as well. And if you subtract something here, I'm just picking numbers out of the air. I'm not trying to solve it. If you subtract something over here, you've got to do exactly the same to the other side, or you're going to get unbalanced. And that's how we solve equations. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So even if you do something totally crazy and unnecessary to one side, doesn't matter. Do it to the other side, and then worry about it. Okay, you've got to keep that scale balanced. So that, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to start off with incredibly easy little equations you can do in your head because the whole idea is not to get the answer, it's to learn the method. Because if you get the method down, then some awful teacher in the future can give you this ugliest equation that you've ever seen and you will not panic because you'll know the steps. And all you have to do is follow the steps. Doesn't matter how ugly the equation is, how pretty the equation is, how easy, how hard. You can do it because you're just following the steps. And that's the way math is. If you can think back to everything you learned in pre-algebra, all those really basic boring rules, even as far as calculus and beyond, math runs on those little basic rules. And so we're going to keep using them and keep using them and keep using them. Today, even. OK. So what I've got is my own version of the sheet you're looking at. And I'm going to do what Elmo loves to do, which is make everything really big, like that. Now, you may think you're stuck with fuzzy, but actually you're not, if autofocus works. Yes! All right. 
there we go. That's my version of the first problem. And what I'm going to, I mean, that you could, of course, do in your head. You know what the answer is, right? 85. 85 is the answer to the, no, maybe not. OK. I guess not. Um, what I'm going to do is, is use the method of solving equations on this. Because again, even with the ugliest kind of equations, I would do exactly the same thing. So here's where I'm starting. All right, and the first thing, even if I couldn't already know the answer, what I would do is say I have to get x by itself. That's how you solve an equation, get the letter all by itself. It's not all by itself. It has a 1 added to it. I've got to make that 1 go away. If 1 is added to x, I'm going to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. I'm going, the only way to make that guy go away is to make him turn into 0. How can I make him turn into 0? If I subtract 1, then I'll have 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'll have x plus 0, which is just x. OK? That's over here. Now, the problem is I have to do, this whole thing will get unbalanced if I don't do exactly the same thing over here. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side of the equation. And if you're thinking, but I already know the answer, I know you already know the answer. The answer is not the idea. The method is the idea. So x equals 2 is your answer. And that maybe was not a big surprise. But what I'd like you to do is, is you and your partner um, go ahead and on your number one do exactly the same thing. All right, use exactly the same step. I mean, not exactly, I mean. What would you subtract in number one? Three, you'd subtract a three from both sides. about number one. Let's move on to number two, which you can also do in your head, but we're pretending you can't. OK, we're pretending you can't. How would we figure out the answer and find out what m equals, finding out what the letter equals, is the goal of solving every equation, finding out what the letters equal. Because the letters stand for numbers in a way, if you like mystery novels, I do. OK, if, if it, finding out what the letter equals is like solving a mystery. Now, admittedly, that is not a very big mystery. But if you work for CSI, you're going to follow certain procedures. And there's no choice. You have to do that. Protocols, right? You have to follow them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow those steps no matter what. And I have to get the letter all by itself. It's not all by itself. It's got this 9 hanging on to it by a slender thread right there, OK? You've got 9 being subtracted from m. So the only way I can make 9 disappear from this side 
is to do the opposite of what's being done to it right there. What is the opposite of subtraction? Addition. But I have to do it to both sides. All right, so if I want to read backwards, I've got 9 minus 9, and that's 0. So I'll have m plus 0 equals 10. And whenever you add 0 to anything, you get what you started with, right? 3 plus 0 is 0. 4 plus 0 is 3 plus 0 is 3. OK. These really basic little problems are using a rule that's called the addition property of equality. Now, you might wonder why if you're subtracting, it's called the addition property of equality. And that's because you're not really subtracting. Because in algebra, this will freak you out. Um, in algebra, there really is not any such thing as subtraction. It's kind of a myth. Um, what's really going on here? It looks like subtraction, but it's not. I've got x plus 1 equals 3. To make this go away on this side, what I'm really doing is I'm adding the opposite of positive 1, which is negative 1. So uh, what I'm really doing is adding negative 1 to both sides of the equation. Now, that's important because it ends up that life gets easier if you can think in terms of addition rather than subtraction. Adding a negative number can be a whole lot easier than subtracting a positive number. Of course, you've got a calculator. And that makes everything easy anyway, so you don't really have to think about it. But, 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 whenever you add opposites, you get 0, and that's what's going on here. This looks like 9 is being subtracted from m, and that's what we would say. If you were reading it out loud, you would say m minus 9 equals 1, if you were reading it to someone. But really what's going on is m plus negative 9 equals 1. And then to get, to get rid of, to make the, nine, the negative 9 vanish on this side, I have to add the opposite number from negative 9. The opposite of negative 9 is positive 9. So I add positive 9 to both sides. These guys zero out. And I'm left with m equals 10. It's a very weird concept in the beginning that can really mess with your mind at first. But if you can force yourself to get used to the idea that in algebra, we don't really subtract. Really, really, really what we're doing is adding a negative then life can become so much easier for you, solving equations, doing everything that we do in math. A lot of the mystery will go out of it. So you'll see me talking about adding the opposite a lot on the videos, OK? Because that's really what we're doing. OK. You do number two. Here, any way you look at it, you're going to add a number. What number are you going to add to both sides? Eight. Eight, right. But now you've got a negative number. How are you going to deal with it? Well, you either remember all those rules or you bring your calculator with you. Thank goodness for calculators. I do like calculators. Sorry. 
Oh, somebody mentioned that there's a, that there are TI emulator apps, and um, that's fine with me if you want to put them on your phone. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I did check one out, and it wasn't exactly like the TI-83, but still, I mean, if it's an app, I like it. <laughs> no, but you get to use a real calculator on a test. One of the, I mean, oh, I know, I'm just saying if you can have any comments. I have. Um, I figured. Okay. <laughs> okay, now number, th number three. There's number three. Number three is something that we call a mixed equation. Because notice that there are letter terms and number terms on both sides of the equal sign. It's like they're jumbled up. So there's this goal to solving equations. This one is that the answer here is not quite as obvious as the other two were. Um, how you want your equation to end up is with a variable term on one side. Let me write variable term. A variable term is just a term with a letter in it, or a number, or a letter, or a letter and a number. So x would be a variable term, 3x would be a variable term, or here 9m would be a variable term because there's a letter in it. Um, the, other, the other kinds of terms you have are called number terms. We have a special name for them. We call them constant terms. Because if you've got a 28, 28 doesn't suddenly become the number 3. 28 is 28. And there's nothing terribly interesting you can do to it. So um, pure numbers are called constants. And number and letter combinations are called variable terms. Okay, But anyway, our goal in solving any equation in the universe is to get your variable term, get them all together and add them up or subtract them or whatever, put them over here on one side, and then the number term have a number over there or the other way around. You could put the variable terms all together over here and then have the number term on the left side. It doesn't matter which you choose to do, but that's the way that we're going to solve this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hmm, because that's a good way to start every equation. Um, if for those of you who are saying, why the heck do I have to take this course? I don't want to be a mathematician. And the answer really, really is the reason that uh, the state wants you to take uh, a, a basic algebra course and you know employers want you to have a basic algebra course is that you're forced to learn to strategize to think in terms of strategizing like a general is planning a battle right well you go this way and and you go around the flank and get them that way and and if you've ever read one of the civil war books they they spend a lot of time talking about the strategies that uh, people like General Lee used. What were his strategies? And they flanked a lot. I mean, that was like one of the goals, come in behind and get them on both sides. So thinking strategically, how are you going to accomplish your goal? Well, that's what algebra is all about, is thinking strategically. So hopefully when you get out of this class, you'll be just a little general. You'll be terrifying. <laughs> all right, kids. Muster. Anyway, here's what I'm going to do. Here's how I would choose to solve this. You can go in a different order, and it doesn't matter. But here's how I would solve this. Since 9 is bigger than 8, and they're both positive, um, I am going to subtract or add the opposite, either way you want to look at it. That, I want to turn it into a 0 over here. Right, because 8 minus 8 is 0. If you've got 8 m's and you take the 8 m's away, you don't have any m's left. No, you're out. But you do have a pure number 15. Now, you see this worked. This did what I wanted it to over here. I have to do exactly the same thing over here. Minus 8 
skim. And the way to think about this when you're adding or subtracting variable terms is, I used to have this little story I would tell myself. You might have another way of remembering things, but what I used to do is I would tell myself the story about the daycare center, the M daycare center. And all the little M's come in, right? Well, finally, at the end of the day, though, you only have nine M's left waiting for their parents to come get them. And finally, eight of them have left. How many little M's are you left with? You're left with one little M, right? If you had nine and eight of them went away, you're left with one little M, and you're waiting for mom or dad to get there so you could go home. So you had nine M's, you got rid of eight M's, you've got one M left. Meanwhile, bring down the plus 28. And that now is your equation. One times M is M, so this is M plus 28 equals zero plus 15, which is 15. And now we've only got a little bit farther to go. What am I going to do here? Add the opposite. Subtract that 28 on both sides. Yes! Or add negative 28, either way you want to look at it. Sometimes it's better just to be straightforward. Sometimes it's not. Like here. OK, I was going to outsmart myself. 15 minus 28 is maybe easier to do if you say positive 15 plus negative 28. I don't know if it would be easier or not. If you can remember your rules from beginning algebra. 28 minus 28 is 0. That leaves me with an M. If you don't have your calculator, you've got to figure out what this is. So let's go over that. I'll go over the rule, and you'll be convinced you need to use a calculator. <laughs> Pulling out the cell phone. OK. In pre-algebra, you learned that when you add numbers that have opposite signs, you have to look at which one is bigger. Well, 28, if you just look at the number part of it, 28 is bigger, right? So you know that your answer is going to be negative. So now what you do is you say 28 minus 15, and you figure out what that is, 13. But because the bigger number is negative, it's going to be negative 13. Now that sounds like magic, but that was what the book talked about in pre-algebra. I believe in using a calculator at all times. Yes. So maybe you'll just run out and buy a calculator. So negative 13 is your answer. Am I right? Did I make a mistake? No. It's I been was known to happen. Figuring out what happened to the calculator. Ah, children? Yes. Ah, amazing. Okay. How, how could I guess that? All right, now you have the same problem, or I did your problem. No, I didn't, but you have almost the same problem. So do your problem. want to be adopted? Okay. Who would be willing to adopt an orphan? We have an orphan here going cheap. I, I mean, no. <laughs> okay. But you're invited. A couple of people have said you're invited. You're invited up front, right there. These nice ladies. OK, so what answer did you get? Yeah. 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 That one was tricky. Kind of tricky. It sort of looks like they zero out, doesn't it? 
but they don't. Number four, we're moving to a different rule. It's called the multiplication property of equality. If you didn't get 10 for the answer to number three, you can, you can do it again at home, figure out what you did. The problems on the homework are a lot like this. The homework is in where? Where's the homework? My math lab, yes. I know that's what everybody meant. We were thinking that we just didn't say it. Aha. That's really ugly. But but we're not oh, that's your problem. That's your problem. Is that all right? Just do your problem? All right. All right. I don't want to take the challenge away. This actually is a lot easier than it looks. You hardly ever get a problem that has a fraction and a decimal in it. So don't worry about it. But notice how you've got a fraction in front of the letter. You've got a fraction in front of the letter, so you've got it multiplying. You've got 1 ninth times the letter B. 1 ninth of B equals negative 2.35. That, the answer there is not obvious at all, but it doesn't have to be if you just follow the steps. And what you need, now let's look at what you need as opposed to what you've got. This is what you got, but what you need is 1B. That's what you want. We're going to multiply 1 ninth by something that will make it magically turn into a one. I see a smile over here. Okay, here it is. Nine over one, the reciprocal. The only thing is I've got to do it to the other side also. I'm not gonna say nine over one because this is not a fraction, so I'm just gonna say nine. Now, I know that with fractions, there are a couple of ways to do this. You can cross cancel, or you can just multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. If you multiply the tops together, you'll get nine. If you multiply the bottoms together, you'll get nine. So if you did it that way, you'd get nine over nine. That's one. So you get your one B. That's happy time. However, hmm, okay. Ooh. Nine times. Let's see if we can autofocus that a little bit. I don't know how it knows to do that. There's a negative button here that's different. Let me show you. On the TIs, down here at the bottom, you see that dash? That makes numbers negative as opposed to this dash, that dash, that lets you subtract. So you have a subtraction button, you have a negative button. This is negative 2.35, so I'm going to, moving this around, I'm going to hit negative and then 2, 2.35 which brings me back up here. So there I am, nine times negative 2.35, and then I'm going to hit the enter key in the lower right, negative 21.15. Huh? What, what? Oh, you wanna see the answer? <laughs> so demanding. Okay, if this problem were in your homework, even though that clearly is the right answer, you could get it marked wrong if the instruction said give a fraction answer. 
So I want to show you one of the truly marvelous things that the TI calculator will do for you. It will magically turn that into a fraction. Watch. I'm going to kind of go out a little bit so you can see the buttons better. You can turn any decimal, you can turn anything into a fraction, almost anything, all right, not everything, almost everything, into a fraction by doing this. If you punch the math key right there, math, and then what that gives you is this screen. Now I'm going to go in again. See how frac is right there? That is not a bad word, OK? <laughs> Lest you get all upset, no, that's frac for fraction, and um, yeah, hit enter. And then see how polite it is? It says, do you want me to fractionize this? And you say yes by hitting enter. So you knew it all along. You knew that the answer was negative 423 over 20. Of course you did. What was it really? Negative 21.15. As to which answer is right, it all depends on whether the instructions told you answer in a fraction or they told you answer in a decimal. And if they didn't tell you, presumably either one would be right. probably do want to bring your TI with you because we're going to be using it a lot. We'll probably use it some every class. We'll be math fracking a lot. And you'll be math fracking at home. Okay, was that fun? Hey! Now, yeah, I had one over 15. Now this one, yeah, we're going to go back to my version because I want you to work on your version. You're learning the mysteries of the universe here. I hope, I hope you're not going to, like, <clears throat> send your notes to WikiLeaks or anything. <laughs> it could cause riots in the street. It was supposed to dig. Okay. After this problem, please remind me to take roll. That looks like negative x equals negative one fifth. However, one of the secrets of the universe is that it's not. It's really negative one times x equals negative one fifth. Let me write that a little better. Negative 1 times x equals negative 1 fifth. That negative sign in front of the letter really means it's a negative 1. So the trick to solving problems like this, multiply both sides of your equation by negative 1, like this. The reason for that is 1 times 1 is 1, but negative times negative is positive. When you multiply two negative numbers, you get a positive. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So you have a 1x, which is really just an x. So you've got x by itself now. Negative one-fifth times negative one, well, you know one-fifth times one is just one-fifth. So negative one-fifth times negative one is positive one-fifth, and so your answer is x equals 
One fifth. On mine, that's the teacher version. Let's see, what's yours? One sixth, yeah. Yay! Yay! All right, before we head on to the other side here, I am going to take roll. This way I can get to know you. Marvin. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Augusto? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Megan Baldwin. Here. Enthusiasm. I'm here and I'm conquering math. Yeah. <laughs> Got to do some brainwashing here. Okay. Uh, Brandon Beach. Hi, Brandon. Brittany Beard. Jason Burks. Abraham Campos. Kevin Cathcart. Cambry Ciola. Here, it's Chola is the last name. Italian. Yes. All right. James Clymer. With a C L Y. No Clymer. Clymer. <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. Holly Colvard. Here. Robert Dawson. Brandy Dorth. Here. Can I say it remotely right? How do you say it? It's Brandy Dorth. All right. <laughs> A lot of people pronounce it wrong, so. So, well, yeah. Okay, Dorth, like an O, Dorth. just like D-O-R. Dorth, but with D. Okay, Dorth. Dorth. Okay. Juanita Ferguson. Hannah Franklin. Here. Amy Hanlon. Craig Huddleston. James LaRocco. LaRocco. Miss Lewis. Here. Hugo Medrano. Here. Ugo. Ugo? Hugo. Hugo. Tiffany Miller. Here. Hi. Tiffany, my email friend from last night. Okay, yeah. You put me on the right track. Tanner O'Brien. Okay. Yanetsi Perez. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. Nadia Plunkett. Uh huh. <coughs> Amy. Amy, I, will you say your last name slowly? Ruby Doo. Ruby Doo? Mm -hmm. Ruby Doo. I can manage that. Okay. Sarah Sentry. Sentry, here. No R, a lot of people do that. Yeah, yeah, that's what comes from just glancing at it, right? Mm -hmm. Sarah Sinti. And Antonio Torres. Thank you. All right. All but one person is here. That's amazing. The mysterious Mr. Clymer. <laughs> All right, gang. We are moving into beginning algebra. Feel it. Feel the vibe. There we go. We're going to do something as soon as I find it. We're going to distribute. That's what we're going to do. We're going to distribute. Now, you did distribute in pre-algebra, but distribution is hard and scary, so we're going to take it step by step. It's not hard, and it won't be scary. All distribution is is it's another form of multiplication. That's all. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying 6 
by this expression right here in the parentheses. And I'm saying, okay, when I multiply 6 by this thing, I'm going to get 24. Cool. All right. Here's what we're going to do. But first, I want you to be aware of something. I'm going to rewrite this without subtraction. All right, so adding a negative one is the same thing as subtracting a positive one, exactly the same thing. The thing is, is it makes distribution easier. Because when I take this 6 and I multiply it by the 2x, and I take this 6 and I multiply it by the negative 1, it makes it really clear that 6 is going to multiply negative 1. Okay? So I'll have 6 times 2x plus 6 times negative 1 equals 24. which will give me 12x because 6 times 2 is 12. So 6 times 2 times x is going to be 12 times x. Plus 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Plus 24. Uh, 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 equals 24. Oh, I need to drink. Okay, now remember, they're, they're supposed to get a little harder. Now, let's talk about goals. The first thing you did was you had to get rid of your parentheses, which means you had to multiply this 6 into there. A good way to remember to not lose your negative sign is to rewrite it like that. You don't absolutely have to, but you've still got to end up with a negative 6. So that's why you have to be a little careful. So now that you're down here, you need a different color. Your first step is going to be to isolate, to get alone, your, your variable term. We've got to get, we deal with this last, okay? So I have a constant term, that's what we call a number a constant term and a constant term, I've got to get this guy over there with that guy. And the only way I can do it is to make it equal zero over here. So what do I add to negative six to make it equal zero? Positive six. Because opposites, when you add opposites, you get zero, okay? So I'm going to add six because that will give me zero here, but I also have to do it to the other side of the equation at the same time. So this is going to leave me with 12x equals 30, and I was really hoping the 12 would go into the number. Yeah, okay. Well, you don't always get what you want, do you? Nope. Okay. We can deal with it. 12x equals 30. Now, we don't need 12x in our life. We need 1x. All right? And here we have 12 multiplied by x. When you have a number in front of a letter, it's multiplied by that letter. So I only know of one way to undo multiplication, and that's division. So I divide by the number in front of x, 
once I have x by itself, all by itself, I divide by 12 because that'll equal 1. 12 over 12 is 1. 12 divided by 12 is 1. But I have to do it to the other side. I have to divide this side by 12 as well. Now, if I say the answer is 30 over 12, I'm going to get told by my math lab I'm wrong because you're only allowed to give a fraction answer in lowest terms. But TI will do that for you, being the wonderful little instrument that it is, once you kind of pull out a little bit there. Yeah. All right, I am going to put in 30 divided by 12, because that's what a fraction is. It's the top divided by the bottom. Well, I have to turn it on. Okay. Little problem I have. Um, the on button's way down there at the bottom. You go figure. Is that good design? I don't think so. But then again, they pay them the big bucks, not me. All right, I'm going to say 30 divided by 12. So 30 divided by 12. There I go. Can you see that? Let me, let me try to try to. Can you see 30 divided by 12? I am going to math frack that. I'm going to push the math button, which gives me that. And then I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to hit Enter again. And the answer is 5 over 2. So 1 times x is just x. x equals 5 over 2. 5 halves is your answer. Is it going to be wrong if you put 2 and a half? Oh, yeah, we don't do that in algebra. Nice people don't do that. <laughs> I remember when I came up from, I don't know, middle school, I guess. When do you stop learning arithmetic? When do you start learning algebra? Eighth grade, though. Okay. So, yeah, when I got into eighth grade, new school and all that, took my first algebra class, and the first thing the teacher did was say, we don't, something like, we don't change that to two and a half. We just leave it that way. And I knew from that point on in my life I would love algebra. Because I hated having to take that extra step of turning, turning that into a mixed number, two and a half. I just hated it. Now, but what if you were doing it with a calculator and, and what if you said 30 divided by 12, enter, you would have gotten 2.5. And if the calculator a calculator. If my math lab said it wanted a fraction answer, then it would mark 2.5 wrong. If it didn't specify, then it would probably mark 2.5 right, because it is right. But we specialize in fractions here in algebra. We love fractions. You'll love fractions by the, yeah, you will. Yeah, 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 you will. Okay, so what, how did you do your problem? What was your answer? Same. Same. Five over two. Wasn't the same problem, was it? No, it wasn't. No. All right, now I had a, I, if you go to Blackboard to where the student questions are, you'll find a new video there. Somebody in one of my beginning algebra classes asked me um, about a problem just like number seven. And so uh, I made a little video showing how to do it step by step. It is not as bad as it looks. Nothing in here is as bad as it looks. Got to remember, those math profs who write these books, they say, how can we make something easy look hard? Okay. We're going to make this. Book. Pardon me? Put it in a math book. I'm going to do your problem. So you do it with me, OK? First thing I'm going to do, now I'm going to write the problem. You don't have to. It's already there. OK. 
Okay. When you've got parentheses in your equation, the first thing you always do is get rid of the parentheses. Now, this y minus 8, those parentheses in front, all right, it's like you have a 1, an invisible 1 in front. We use lots of invisible 1s in algebra, okay? They're all over the place. Don't you see them? Little 1s, they're walking. This negative sign is really a negative one. You've got to become a little schizophrenic here to do math, all right? So I am going to move that negative sign over and put a one. This is now negative one, and I'm going to put a plus in here. So I have one times y minus 8 plus negative 1 times y plus 9 equals 7y. Right. <coughs> and then I'll write it more neatly. So that's where I'm at. Now it's going to be real easy. Believe it or not, it really is. Because whenever you have a number in front of the parentheses like this, and you have more than two, ter two or more terms in there, what you do is distribute. Oh, heck. All right. Well, 1 times y is y, and 1 times minus 8 is going to be minus 8, right? Yeah. So 1 times this thing is just this thing. And once you do your multiplication, you don't need the parentheses anymore. I should have turned that to a plus negative 8, and I didn't. I'm not being consistent. I'm being bad, and you're letting me get away with it. Your job as students is to keep your professors on the straight and narrow. Keep us honest. Now I'm going to do it. 1 times y is y. 1 times negative 8. 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. Plus, negative 1 times y is negative 1y. Plus, negative 1 times positive 9 is negative 9. Equals 7y. I take this number and multiply it by that and that. I take this number and multiply it by that and that. Now on the left, all I have to do is get my like terms together. That means, now here's the reason really to write everything as a plus. If you've got everything added, you can move it all around and it doesn't hurt. If you've got stuff multiplied, you can't just, I mean, subtracted, you can't just switch it around. For instance, if you've got 3 minus 2, that's 1. But you can't just decide you're going to switch it around and say that's the same thing as 2 minus 3 because it's not. It's negative 1. You could switch plus around, right? Yeah, but you can't switch minus around. So if you rewrite this so everything is a plus, you can just move it around to wherever you want it. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this y. I'm going to add it to the negative 1y. I'm going to take that negative 8, and I'm going to add it to the negative 9. And now I've got a 1y, 1y plus negative 1y. 1 plus negative 1 is 0, right? So this is going to be 0y, which is 0. And negative 8 plus negative 9 is negative 17.
equals 7y. We'll take a breather. One step, one step remaining. Notice your variable term is on the side where it usually isn't. Is that good English? That's not. But um, you get the idea. How are we going to get y by itself? Yeah, divide. Because this 7 is multiplied by y, I have to undo that multiplication and divide by 7 and by 7. And doggone it, 7 will not go evenly into 17. So now, what is the answer? The answer is y equals, what is negative divided by positive? Negative. It's negative. This is going to be negative 17 over 7, and that's your answer. Or negative 17 sevenths. But I am so glad that we're going to have a chance to do number eight before you go running off. So rather than stopping and taking questions, I do want to get eight in. This is called a rational equation. Whenever you've got an equation that has fractions in it, it's called a rational equation. Because rational comes from ratio, the word ratio, R-A-T-I-O which is Latin for fraction. So rational means having to do with a fraction. So I'll do yours again. Two-fifths x minus one-third x. So this is 2 fifths x plus negative 1 third x equals 2. And now my goal, actually, it's real fun if you can kind of get into the spirit of it. You're, the goal when you're solving a rational equation is to just get rid of the fractions. And you can do that because it's an equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides, it stays balanced. So you can do it. Okay? I need to multiply both sides of this equation by one number. And that number, yeah, that number happens to be the smallest number, hopefully, because the smaller the better. The smallest number that both of those numbers will go evenly into. Which is 15. So I'm going to take the whole left side of this equation and multiply it by 15, and the right side of this equation and multiply it by 15. And now what we're going to do, since we have two terms in here, I'm going to take the 15 and multiply it by the first term, and the 15 and multiply it by the second term. 
and you're about to see magic happen. It's enough to make you smile. Since this is a fraction, whenever you multiply a whole number times a fraction, life gets easier if you turn the whole number into a fraction by putting it over one like that. That helps you keep straight what's on top and what's on the bottom. Now, if you multiply the tops together and the bottoms together, this will give you 30 over 5 x plus 15, oh, plus negative, yeah. All right, well, let's stick it up here. It doesn't matter. Negative, fi yeah, negative 15 over 3, x equals 30. Let me move it up here so you can see. What is 30 divided by 5? Yeah, I love it. 6x. Plus, what is 15 divided by 3? Five. 5. Plus negative 5. X equals 30. Well, plus negative 5X is the same thing as subtraction, but let's just go with 6 plus negative 5. That's the same thing as 6 minus 5, which is 1. 1, one yeah. So, um, yeah, this will be 1x equals 30, and since 1 times x is x, you'll have x equals 30, and you have conquered this awful, ugly problem right there. Okay, we don't have time to do the last two. I have stars by them because you're going to get crazy answers. So go home and play with those, and we'll talk next time about what the crazy answers mean. I guess I won't see you till Monday, will I? Let's have a Friday class anyway. <laughs> Okay, well, make an appointment for your pretest. Go home, do your homework. Watch the videos, they'll help you. Where is all the information in the course? Blackboard. Blackboard. Where are the homework problems? My math lab. My math lab, yes. You're brilliant, you're Einstein. <laughs> Bye bye. Oh, look at you. Thank you. Two questions. Yes, ma'am. So on this, not that one. On this one, uh -huh. we uh, left it at that. And I was just wondering why this one was left at that. And not well, this one, it wasn't. Yeah. Like, we yeah, had to buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, did, why didn't we break that down when we broke this one down? Because um, the same number will go into 20 and 8. Uh, five, four. Four will go into 20 five times, and four will go into 8 two times. So this can be reduced, but here the same number doesn't go into 17 and 7. Okay. And that's, that's probably an easy way to do it, but. I have this calculator, uh -huh. and you broke, like I have the decimal. Is there a way I could change it to a fraction on this calculator, or do I need to get the other calculator? 
Because it has a lot of the same functions yes. as the right, so 83, but it's a little bit different. I honestly am not familiar with this. I'm if, not you, if you can get this to change back and forth with fractions, it looks like it'll do a lot. Yeah. So I don't know how to do that. Oh, okay. Okay. So if I just do this by hand, I just need to see if they, you know, the common number and then just do it across because divided by four is five. Yes. Five by four. Yes. Okay. That's called reducing or simplifying. Okay. 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 So I think I got that. I don't. I didn't do pre-algebra. So I'm just like, oh my god. Well, you get to learn it now. Yeah. Because yeah. the people who do know pre algebra might be sitting here really bored. Right. Me, I'm just like, I wish I had you in math in high school because I didn't learn a thing in high school. Well, you know, we're kind of mentally busy in high school. I was. Okay. I think I get that whole thing now. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with it, but I know it's a good calculator. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, well, I just got this the other day. Okay. And um, I can't figure out why, like, if I put it in the fraction, it keeps throwing that E right there. Uh -huh. And sometimes it puts a weird oh, number no, no. right after. Yes, yes. That's scientific notation. So let's go to the mode. And we are going to change you to normal. Okay. You're going to suddenly be normal. It's not that you're not normal. <laughs> and we're going to change you to real instead of A plus BI. Because you can't go to A plus BI until next semester. No. Uh, answer is auto. Uh, go to no. stat diagnostics off. Um, yeah, it looks okay unless you want to set the time. But you can play with that. Now, let's see. Um, do that again. Well, oh my god. I'm gonna quit one of my jobs, so I'm gonna quit both so like I can get back to serving. See, I'm probably gonna quit some boys and my other job maybe like once a week or something, because this is just too much. There you go. Okay. Yeah, it was putting an E at the end of everything I was doing. That's called scientific notation. And if you take physics or chemistry, they'll teach that to you. Probably by too. Okay. Whatever your science is, they'll teach it to you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right. And you'll have the calculator to do it. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hey, I was wondering if y'all had like a solution or anything for the first day of someone here. All on Blackboard. Okay, thank you. You know how to get to your Blackboard yes. class? Yes, it is. All of it's there. Look in the menu. You'll see the syllabus. You'll see the ticket for the pre test. You'll see all of it. Okay. Thanks. I have to um, have a chance, but I'm not going to be here on Monday. Is that going to be a big deal as long as I do my homework on Blackboard? No. Oh. It, well, it's not on Blackboard, it's on my math lab. Yeah, yeah. That, that really is how your account is just being here. So, yeah, that's much more important as long as you get it done. Because grown ups have other things to do. Right. Okay, so as long as I get my homework done, everything is. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. And you can always email me if you have questions. Um, okay, All right, thank you. All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yes. Hello. All right. Did I did I successfully manage to lead you on in, into a rabbit hole? But anyway, yeah. mm. I got her out of it. You know, oh, I, I I get confused and then I, I can't keep up and then it freaks me out because I'm not kind of and then I'm like, oh my god, it's oh, all god. it's all on blackboard too. Hopefully, this so so you can sit and meditate. Yes. Hopefully, blackboard will make it easier. Did you get the paper on us over there? Yes, you did. yes I did. Okay. Um. See you you want to make time to talk? Um, yes. That would be a good thing. Um, I'll email you. You do that. That's the best way. And we'll make an appointment that way, right? Yes, I will. All right. Hi. Hi. Um, the, the calculator app that we download to our personal computer. Yes. Obviously, we need the calculator in this apps to do some of the quizzes, correct? Or not? Yes. Yes. You're going to need it okay. all the time. So, either, I and mean, I understood, we can rent the T83 or T82. T82, you can rent it. But would any other calculator suffice, or is it strictly so we're all on the same page? We should all use that T. Well, what math do you plan to do after? Um, 
Oh, okay. If you plan to take intermediate algebra and college algebra, uh, well, there's one more math course. You need to do. Oh, really? But if you're going to take AAS math, I think that'll be enough. Yeah, because it. But okay. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I know we're going to be graphing, and we're going to be using the graphing calculator for graphing. Um, I can hand out calculators in class. And if you were using it, your, the computer one, the free one at home, mm -hmm. you would still be familiar with it. Yeah, and I have that one at home. I downloaded it and I started. And it worked okay? It works fine, yeah. I love what it works. Yeah, yeah, it works. Uh, so just practice on the one at home okay. and see. See if that's sufficient. Okay. I could rent one, worst case scenario, because they're similar, the 82 and the 84. Yes, they are. Mostly they're the same, but the 84 will do more things right. than the 82. Okay. Thank you. Um, Yes, everyone's having trouble with it. Yes. And I have something in here. I hope it comes right back to where it was. Yes. Okay. This did not make sense to me. This is, is it two numbers that do not have a zero, like one to six? There are rational numbers. Let me put on my class. Can I read? Can you go up one line above mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's, it's all x such that x is a quotient of two integers with the denominator not zero. That's all it's saying. It's saying fractions. Oh, is that what the set of rational numbers? That's just all the fractions. It's a, fr a fraction number. Yeah. yeah, that's all he meant on there. Okay. Fraction makes sense. But a Khan Academy wouldn't work. Okay. Well, then you don't really need it. There okay. are plenty of videos actually in the homework itself that are visible. Okay. Hello, everybody. Is anybody here new? A bunch of people have been adding. Okay, Blackboard. Yes, we're going to go. We're going to go into that. Um, this is some of what we're going to be doing today. I need water, in the worst way. Okay, these are the worksheets we're working with today. Um, if you would each come and get one, but don't just sit there and work them out. The idea is that we're going to talk about strategy more than we're going to talk about answers. Okay, I gotta give in. I need sugar. I have another class to go. 
Oh. I'm starting up and then went after that. Oh my god. Tomorrow I got three. That's why chocolate is so necessary. It's good for you. It's healthy. It's not. It's not. It makes me bloat up. Oh. What about dark chocolate? Probably does something bad to you. That's considered bad. Oh, Mars has done studies with this. Oh. If you can't trust Mars studies on chocolate, and of course they're the ones who made what's in your hand. If you can't trust them, who can you trust? Absolutely. I mean, no one knows chocolate better than Mars. Well, trust, of course, but they're don't count. They're a different class. All right. If I sit down, it's going to be dangerous. Later. Okay. Mm. Oh, I will.